Guys, I am so in love. Hey guys, welcome back and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Laura and on this channel we talk about all things Catholic as well as just living a Catholic life. Now, I have been gifted a Seven Sorrows Rosary and so after praying it just one time, I am feeling very compelled to share this with the world. So if you don't know what the Seven Sorrows are or um, what that there's an actual rosary dedicated to it, then stay tuned so that we can talk about it because I have a feeling that this is going to be life changing for anyone who picks up this devotion. So first off, I have to say thank you to my Instagram follower who sent me this rosary. I am so forever grateful to you and um, it's just, I'm really excited about how this is going to impact my life. So. I don't even know how to start because I feel like Chesterton right now and like everything about this is just amazing and I don't even know where to start. So let's talk about the seven sorrows of Mary, the rosary itself, and then the seven promises of this devotion. The reason we even know about this is that St. Bridget of Sweden um, had conversations with Mary. I don't, I don't know exactly like the, all the details, but I'm pretty sure Mary appeared to her and told her this one quote that I want to read to you, it says, I gaze upon the children of men to see whether anyone feels compassion for me, and alas, I see but few. If many forget me, at least you, my daughter, do not forget me. Consider how much I have suffered. So just from yesterday's experience, I have to tell you that focusing on Mary's suffering completely negates our own in a very powerful way and it also made me in particular want to be a better wife a better mother a better child of god just everything better like, so let's talk about what the seven sorrows of, of mary are the first one is the prophecy of simeon and we know this we you know when we pray the joyful mysteries we also have the prophecy of simeon show up if you're praying through scripture you can look at saint luke 2 34 through 35 the second sorrow is the flight into Egypt. Now I think that this can kind of get whitewashed after the reading for the year is over and we kind of forget about this flight to Egypt, but when you're sitting there praying your Hail Marys and really focusing on what this flight to Egypt encountered, Father Ripperger was just saying it was very far distance and it would have taken them about 30 days to get there. It's just barren wasteland desert. And the imagery that when I prayed the rosary was um, of angels kind of guiding them and it was just just so cool because I don't think we take time in general to meditate upon this. The third, third sorrowful mystery is the loss of the child Jesus in the temple. So again, we do encounter this in the joyful mysteries, but when you focus on the sorrow of losing Jesus and all that it entails, and almost like a precursor to losing Jesus in that bigger way upon the cross, it, I don't know, just it was just so different because we're, again, we're focusing on it. The rosary is through Mary's eyes, of course, but this is even more intense in a way, I guess. The fourth sorrow of Mary is the meeting of Jesus and Mary on the way of the cross. So this always gets me when I pray Stations of the Cross, and it's just it's powerful. The fifth sorrow of Mary is the crucifixion and death of Jesus, which, again, when we were doing the Sorrowful Mysteries of the Rosary, we are getting to this point where we have the crucifixion. But I think usually we're focusing on the crucifixion from the standpoint of us and Jesus. And we're supposed to be putting ourselves while we meditate into that moment, being next to Mary. But when you focus on the sorrow of Mary herself, you're focusing on her impact and, the, and all the sorrow that she felt. And, and you feel her feelings. And it's like, not only did we do that to him, but we, I'm going to tear up. We did that to her. And this perfect creature, this perfect sinless creature, we just caused her such sorrow. And as she told St. Bridget, who is sitting here thinking about this? Not many of us. So then the sixth, this is the sixth sorrow kiss me. These last two, especially when you pray along with YouTube, I'll link the video I prayed along with, but the imagery just got me. Um, the taking down the body of Jesus from the cross, you know, and, um, I think it's called the Pieta, the image of Mary holding the dead body of Jesus. I mean, again, like, just when you really meditate and you empathize with Mary and you just go beyond yourself, 
one you're just never going to want to sin again. Honestly, it's just it takes all self-love and self-desire out the window when you start really meditating on this stuff. It's it's just so powerful but again, but as a mom, I mean, I can't imagine holding my dead child. I mean, many many parents have to go through this. And it's interesting cuz society will say, "Well, that's disordered that a child goes before the parent." But not really if we're Christian because Jesus did go before Mary and yes it doesn't seem to be the natural order of things but yet we I don't think we can call it disordered because again life isn't about fitting into this like I said in the other video it's not fitting about fitting into this cookie cutter you know kind of laid out lifestyle that the average American or average person on this earth goes through it's just the life that you're given and and what are you doing in this moment and that's that's all we have, but it is. It's tragic when we have to hold our own children in this way, if we do. And it's, so again, just meditating on this stuff is intense. Um, and then number seven is the burial of Jesus. And there's this one image in this video where Mary is holding on. To, they're carrying Jesus' body into the, into the tomb, and she has his hand in her hand, and she's kissing his forehead, and it's just like there's just no words. It's it's so powerful. I had to follow along with the video, as I've been saying, because I don't know how to pray this quite yet. Um, so the way the rosary looks, so there's seven sections of the sorrowful, uh, sorrowful rosary of Our Lady. So it starts out, this one is really pretty and it has her image with the seven sorrows and on the back it has the crucifixion and then it has these three Hail Marys for her tears and then you start going through and this one's really pretty because it actually has each um, sorrow illustrated on the back of each medal. So I'll link this below for sure in case you want to get it too. It was, I think it was like $15, I think. Not much. Um, and I'm going to have make sure to go get this blessed. But so, and then on every, so you do an Our Father, then on every bead you say a Hail Mary while meditating on her sorrow. And I would do it live. I will do it live for sure once I can kind of get my head around the prayers more. I almost like need a little pamphlet or something. So so praying it in itself is powerful enough that I think that everyone can pick up this devotion. I plan on praying it daily. Um, I pray my, my rosary in the morning right now with YouTube, um, with scripture while I'm getting ready. And then this is more, this is more like last night I prayed it before bed and I needed, I think this one you really should be like a little more focused than like, getting ready in the morning or multitasking. I mean, I think, obviously, ideally, we pray all rosaries on our knees, focused 100% on our prayer and not being distracted. But as busy moms, I, I would encourage you to not let that keep you from praying, like even if you have to multitask. So if you're gonna pray it only once a week, I would choose Fridays because it coincides perfectly with, um, you know, our mini Good Friday every week and it could be a mortification or an offering up. I just think praying this on a regular schedule is going to be really, really beneficial for your spiritual life. So let's talk about the seven graces though that come from having a devotion to the seven sorrows of Mary. One, I will grant peace to their families. Two, they will be enlightened by the divine mysteries, which definitely. Three, I will console them in their pains and I will accompany them in their work. Four, I will give them as much as they ask for as long as it does not oppose the adorable will of my divine son or the sanctification of their souls. Five, I will defend them in the spiritual battles with the infernal enemy and I will, I will protect them at every instant in their lives. I mean, you guys, these promises are intense. Six, I will visibly help them at the moment of their death. They will see the face of their mother. What could be better than that? That promise is, in, it gives me goosebumps. It's so intense and it's so loving because like I said, we're so sinful. We don't deserve any of this. But yet, if we can focus on Mary and her sorrows and get out of ourselves, that's a promise she made to us as our mother. And this seven is, listen to this. I have obtained this grace from my divine son that those who propagate this devotion to my tears and dollars, sorrows, will be taken directly from this earthly life to eternal happiness since all their sins will be forgiven 
and my son and I will be their eternal consolation and joy. You guys, this is a get out of purgatory free card. I'm not sure it's a good idea just to pray it, just to pray it thinking like fearfully I'm going to get out of purgatory by doing this. But yet I think that even when we start praying out of a sense of fear or out of a sense of obligation, the prayers still work. So I'm not going to say that you have to have perfect motives in order to achieve the graces because I think the graces sometimes flow from having sometimes a an imperfect motivation. Just as when we have imperfect contrition and we go to confession, say we go to confession out of fear of purgatory or fear of hell, we're still ab absolved. And that yes, we want to get to a place where we have true sorrow and true contrition because that's going to benefit us more in our graces. And remember there's nine layers of heaven so we want to get to as high of a place in heaven as possible. We don't want to just settle for the ninth realm. But I just think that if you sit down and say, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just going to pray this Our Lady of Sorrows. I, I know that she will speak to your heart and that you will find yourself compelled to, to have a devotion to this, not because of those promises, but in, in spite of those promises. I think that's it. I just really wanted to make this video because I wanted to get this devotion out there. I, you know how sometimes things will kind of pop up in your life and you'll be like, why, why do we keep hearing about this? Well, Our Lady of Sorrows for the past few months has been kind of popping up just now and then either in a video, someone will mention it, or even my friend's daughter came over and drew the, uh, a heart, a, Immaculate Heart of Mary on my whiteboard with the with the seven sorrows and I just think that or I know that God will and Our Lady speak to us through these kind of musings through these pushings that that seem almost serendipitous if that's the right word so this has been a while coming and I am just so thankful and again this is the kind of thing where when we take these yeses, when we say yes to God's promptings, it opens up a world that we didn't even know existed. And I, when I, after I prayed this, the sorrows of Mary and reflected on it and started doing some research and just kind of understanding it a bit better, I just have a peace today that I didn't have yesterday. I'm feeling eager to go experience this again with her, to walk with her through her sorrows. In conclusion, I really hope that you um, pray this. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever heard of Our Lady of Sorrows, if you knew there was a rosary, if you have another devotion. I found a beautiful prayer that I will link down below. I want to encourage you to watch the Father Riffberger video on Our Lady of Sorrows, and um, I'll put some more resources down below as well. Thank you, thank you again for my Instagram subscriber who sent me this rosary. I will be forever in your debt because I can just tell it's going to be an amazing ride from from here and so um you guys continue to know god love god do god's will and listen to those promptings because mother mary is working in your life and in this very day so god bless i love each and every one of you and i'll talk to you again real soon bye